preventing lawmakers from really coming to a more substantial agreement rather than these constant stopgap measures? A great question. And, and the answer is basically the both sides have not dug in yet to begin substantive negotiations. Democrats say that Republicans have sort of been dug in here, have been insistent on, on certain policy writers being included as part of these broader bills. But the reality is just that these talks haven't begun. And, and so we've been forced to see these constant continuing resolutions um, because both sides uh, have been distracted by various other priorities. Democrats have been obviously focused on their broader social spending bill. And I think that's consumed a lot of the oxygen. And Republicans uh, really haven't come to the table yet in terms of offering offers on how to get the government funded for the full year. So mm -hmm. that's put us in this position again for having to pursue a second continuing resolution to keep the lights on. Well, and Congress is also running out of time to act on the debt ceiling. Failure to raise it by December 15th could put the country into default. But there is word on the Hill that congressional leaders may use the National Defense Authorization Act to address the debt limit. What can you tell us about this, Anthony? Yeah, my colleagues and I were first to report that today, that the NDAA, as it's known affectionately here in, in Washington, is a potential source of uh, dealing with the, the debt limit. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, within the last hour or so, has said basically he didn't think the votes would be there. Um, it, what's been interesting is that leaders Schumer and McConnell over in the Senate have been quietly discussing a path forward on the debt ceiling uh, for a number of days. Uh, they've been pretty coy about their intentions, what that path might be. Um, so we'll have to see if there's some plan here. But it looks like uh, Leader McCarthy is throwing cold water on this idea of using the national uh, defense bill uh, as the vehicle for addressing the debt limit. It does have to be done, according to Treasury, by December 15th. So time is, uh, you know, of the urgency here. Well, Anthony, more than 20 House Democrats sent a letter to Speaker Pelosi and Majority Leader Steny Hoyer on Thursday. Lawmakers are urging them to pass legislation to address supply chain disruptions. Tell us about the significance and how House leaders are responding. It's been very interesting. Certainly, this is a push from about two dozen House Democrats, who are many of whom are frontliners, uh, those that are considered to be in uh, seats that may be vulnerable in the midterm elections. And basically, they're seeing political uh, political costs here. This is something that people are feeling uh, every day in terms of these supply chain disruptions. So they want leadership to do more, uh, take up legislation that's been introduced that they think would benefit the supply chain. What was interesting is uh, Speaker Pelosi today indicated at her press conference that uh, the chairs of the various committees that have been working on this bill that's aimed at boosting competitiveness of the U.S. against China, uh, they can be in a meeting today. There's hope of working out an agreement with that bill and passing that before the end of the year. They believe that that, in addition to the bipartisan infrastructure bill they've already passed, would help alleviate some of those supply chain concerns. All right. Anthony Adragna, thank you. Thank you. Prosecutors in Michigan say that they are also considering criminal charges against the parents of the 15-year-old suspect accused of a deadly school shooting. Four students were killed and several others were wounded at Oxford High School earlier.